Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the new Hisense E7H QLED 4K TV. And it comes in 43, 50, 55, and 65 inch flavors. I've got the big boy here, the 65, and normally this will save you back about a thousand pounds in the UK, 999 to be exact, but thanks to some very tasty deals coming on Amazon Prime Day, this will actually drop down to under 700 pounds. Which is why I jumped at the chance to have a look at this TV when Hisense got in touch and offered to send this over and also sponsor this video. Because the truth is, I'm lucky enough to review some super high-end flagship TVs. But whenever my friends ask for recommendations, I can't exactly say, oh, go and get the new 77-inch LG G2 OLED for four grand. Okay, fair enough. It's not OLED, it's not mini-LED, we don't get HDMI 2.1, uh, and it doesn't even get particularly bright. There are definitely some compromises with this, but 65 inch 4K quantum dot HDR with Dolby Vision, HDR 10 plus, AI 4K upscaling, some pretty reasonable input lag and response times. The bezels are nice and thin. I think from the front it actually looks pretty good. For the money, this is definitely worth considering. Although on a side note, if you do fancy adding a bit of extra flair to your TV setup, get yourself one of these Philips Hue gradient light strips. They are a little bit pricey, but I think it looks good, particularly if you're using the TV on a stand rather than a wall mounted. And actually speaking of upgrades, while the built-in eight watt speakers are actually pretty decent and they get ridiculously loud. Nice and loud, but it's lacking a little bit in bass. So to really improve your audio experience, I would definitely recommend pairing it with some speakers or a sound bar. We do have eARC support with HDMI 2. And while Hisense do offer their own range of sound bars, now this is gonna sound weird, but I wanna show you the feet. Not my feet, you'll be pleased to hear, the TVs. Look at these. I don't know why more TV brands don't do this, but the Hisense gives you two options for mounting the feet, depending on how wide your TV stand is. It's such a clever design. Okay, let's talk about picture quality. And the first thing you need to know about this is that it's using a VA LED panel rather than the more traditional IPS, which means we're actually getting a higher contrast than your typical TV, but there are some downsides, like the color accuracy isn't quite as high, and also the viewing angles are a little bit inferior. Although, as you can see, going from straight on to pretty much side on, the brightness and the colors actually hold up quite well. Also, this anti-glare coating does a pretty good job. You can still see lights and reflections, but they're softened and less distracting. This is also one of the cheapest TVs you can buy that has a quantum dot layer. That's the Q in QLED. And this helps to boost the color space and give us, well, richer and more vibrant colors. We also get direct full array backlighting. So while you can certainly tell that black bars or super dark scenes aren't as inky black as no LED, it does a decent job. And the benefit of a fold backlight like this is that we actually get better screen uniformity and less light bleed versus a more common edge lit TV. Okay, do you want the good news or the bad news first? Let's go with the good news. And that is that this supports all the major HDR formats. We get Dolby Vision, HDR10, HDR10+, Plus, and actually neither Samsung or LG can claim to offer both Dolby Vision and HDR10+, Plus, and also HLG for broadcast TV. But now for the bad news, the highest brightness I measured was around 400 nits, which is fine for casual viewing and particularly in SDR, but fundamentally HDR is all about brightness. So while it's absolutely fine, it's not gonna be the most crazy blow your mind kind of HDR experience. Now diving into the picture settings, and really you don't have to mess around with any of this if you don't want to. It's all on auto by default, and so the TV will automatically put you in the best picture mode for TV, sports, movies, HDR, and of course also games, because we have that auto low latency mode, or ALM. Now for TV and movies, we also get AI 4K upscaling. Essentially the TV identifies objects in the scenes, compares it against a cloud-based database, and then adjusts and improves the picture quality. And this is all going on in the background. One thing I would suggest though is turning off ultra smooth motion, or at least changing it to a more subtle film mode. It's on by default and it can give you that sort of soap opera effect. Okay, firing up the PS5, let's play some games. Although actually, if we first jump into the display settings of my PS5, the TV is also limited to 60 Hertz. And also, as you can see here in the video settings, the HDMI 2 ports limit 4K60 HDR, so most new games, to the slightly inferior YUV 422 color space rather than full RGB. Now, to be fair, HDMI 2.1 is still reserved for most mid to high end and high end TVs, and it would certainly add to the cost. That's just one of those compromises Hisense have made, the decisions they've made to keep this 
affordable. But still, it would have been a bit of a nice to see feature-proof feature. All models do get the auto low latency mode though, which basically puts you in game mode when it detects a console input. And we're looking at sub 20 milliseconds of combined response time and input lag, which is solid, if not exceptional. No! Last one! The last one! one. <laughs> it's heartbreaking. At the end of the day, we're still playing games in 4K, 60, HDR. It's pretty good. Now front and center is this home dashboard. The TV runs Hisense's own Vida U5 software, although this can actually vary based on regions around the world. But paired with a quad-core processor, I have to say the home screen, the settings menus, apps, everything felt much faster and more responsive than I expected. There's the usual suspects of streaming services, including Netflix, Prime Video, Disney+, YouTube, and for us Brits specifically, there's Freeview Play and BritBox, we also get Google and Amazon's voice assistants built in, plus Hisense's own voice assistant, and you can just press the mic button on your remote Amazon to activate Prime. it. The tech chap. Yay! Nailed it. So Hisense call this their floating display design. We have super thin bezels and some quite subtle and unobtrusive feet. Everything around the back and the feet are all plastic. Who cares? From the front, it looks good. This is also the bundled remote that you get in the box, which is nice and functional, and there's half a dozen shortcut keys for some streaming apps. There is no backlight though, and again, it feels a little bit plasticky, but it does the job. So I've had this Hisense set up in my studio here for a couple of weeks now, and while there are certainly compromises, it doesn't get bright enough to really show off the best of HDR, there's no HDMI 2.1, it's 60 hertz, there's no AirPlay or Chromecast, and also you might need to use a streaming stick to get apps like Apple TV, but considering that price, especially when it's on sale, I think this is absolutely worth considering, and actually it's one of the TVs I would probably suggest to most of my friends who are looking for a new TV. And actually you've got the options of, say, the 43-inch if you want a nice second or bedroom TV. And also I think realistically most of the people I know would want to go for, say, the 55-inch version, which again is cheaper than this. I genuinely think it's a pretty good buy, and also you do get two years of Hisense's manufacturer warranty. So I'll leave a link below if you do want to check this out for yourself, but question to you, what is the first thing you watch or play when you get a new TV? For me, it was always Band of Brothers or The Dark Knight, although more recently it's the likes of Forza 5 or Horizon Forbidden West or some fancy 4K HDR YouTube videos. If you've got any questions at all, let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.